Check the description for the following discount codes. If you saw my original review of, uh, of the Pico, one of the things that was really very poor was the Pico Streaming Assistant, which is what you would use to connect this to your PC for PC VR, either over Wi-Fi or using a USB-C cable plugged into the side here. Now, I'll just do some screen capture here, but the long and short of it is they give you three options for quality, which we'll see on the screen here in a second. Uh, smooth, SD and HD. And this is your typical Chinese kind of logic here. They've chosen like initialisms that you're familiar with, HD for high definition, SD for standard definition, and smooth obviously relates to nothing. But you know, in HD and SD actually mean something in technical terms. So SD is 480p and high definition is really should be 1080p. I know in the early days people called HD ready televisions HD ready and they were 720p, but they're not, you know. It's, SD we'd all sort of think of as a normal 480p, you know, um, quality and HD we think of as, as 1080p and then we go 1440p, 4K, you know, onwards and upwards. Now what's funny about this, I'll put up the actual um, screenshots of, of what these resolutions really are in a second. But what, what this does, you can choose your, your refresh rate as well, 72 or 90 hertz, your controller compatibility, microphone, audio delay, ASW. But that's all that is. Um, and the issue with this is that even on HD, which is technically their highest quality setting, you're still massively undersampling. Now, if you use wireless connectivity, you use virtual desktop, you've got a choice of potato, low, medium, high, and now godlike. And what that does is it changes the render resolution. And that's what these settings do here, smooth, SD, and HD. But even HD is still massively undersampled. That is rendering at 2160 by 2160. Now, don't confuse that with the physical panel resolution per eye because that is what the panels are per eye. Render resolution, I'll keep this short and sweet if you don't already know about it. Your render resolution has to be about 40% higher than that of the physical panel's resolution to accommodate barrel correction. The image basically has to be rendered larger. Um, otherwise, when you look through your VR headset, the, resol the rendered resolution at the center of the image, if it isn't about 40% higher than the panel, will be much, much lower because of barrel correction. I've got videos on that if you want to look it up or just Google it. But anyway, this high setting, 2160 by 2160, looks awful because it is rendering at a very, very low resolution. Now, what these settings actually do here is report back to Steam VR because this supports Steam VR. That's how you use it um, with your PC to play PC VR games. Unless you use virtual desktop, then you can play Oculus titles as well. But with the cable plugged in, over USB-C, you're limited to Steam VR. You can't play Oculus titles. Um, you would need to use virtual desktop for that, and that's what I recommend anyway. No one needs to use a wire if you don't absolutely have to. So Steam VR loads up, and whether you've chosen Smooth, SD, or HD, that reports a resolution to Steam VR, which is what you'll see me put up on the screen now. Smooth, um, it's quite funny actually. Let me just bring these up myself so I can remember what they are. Smooth is 1664, which is which made me think of Cronenberg cans, um, my favorite choice of beer. So that is a very, very low render resolution. It's about half what you would want to do to get the best possible image quality if your graphics card allowed it. And then SD is 1920 by 1920, which is the closest thing you might say to high definition. Um, but that's still very much under sampling from a VR panel resolution and render resolution point of view. And then HD is, as I say, 2160 by 2160, which is the native res of the panel, but that is not what you want it to be rendered at. So what you actually want to do is you need to do this with your Pico connected over the streaming assistant. Get Steam VR, because Steam VR won't load up with these options here if you haven't. Get Steam VR loaded up and then change that render resolution to 3160 by 3160. This is the equivalent, as close as we can get, to the highest setting on virtual desktop and to what the panel should be 
um, what the render resolution should be at to give us a close to native image when we look through it. Now, obviously, to run this resolution, you need a fairly beefy graphics card because that is a lot of pixels to push around because that's per eye, obviously, as well. So you're rendering slightly bigger than a 4K display if we compare it to flat panels per eye at 90 hertz in this instance as well. So you will need a good graphics card. I can't render at this resolution with my 3080. I actually run sort of somewhere in the in the mid 2000s, like 240, 245 or 2500, something like that. Um, very roughly, but it depends on what graphics card you have. But you once you've got Pico connected by, via the streaming assistant over the cable, or if you're not using virtual desktop, you can do it wirelessly. Choose, in the Pico options, choose HD, choose a refresh rate of 90, assuming you want 90. Because I've also noticed that when you change the quality in the Pico system from HD to SD to smooth, it alters the scaling of the Steam VR resolution slider. I think it may also alter the compression, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but I set it at, set it at HD, which is high as it goes. Get it connected. Get Steam VR loaded up, so you've got this screen here, and then put this slider up to roughly where where I am here, 3160 by 3160. Obviously, graphics card dependent. Then what you'll need to do is exit Steam VR and the Pico will disconnect at this point. But from that moment on, when you reconnect using the streaming assistant, Steam VR should remember this resolution that you've set here, whatever it ends up being for you in your graphics card. I mean, worst case, if it does, if it loses it for some reason, you only have to come in here, set it, but then restart Steam VR because otherwise the resolution doesn't actually change in the Pico headset. I don't know if that came out particularly clearly, it sounded like it wasn't the clearest set of instructions. But basically, connect your Pico using the streaming assistant, put the quality to HD, put your refresh rate to 90, go into the Steam VR settings, put the slider to 3160 by 3160, and then perhaps work your way backwards until you get a solid frame rate, restart Steam VR, and it should stay at that render resolution. And now, the streaming assistant looks much more like what you would expect to see in a headset that has a nice high resolution panel with really clear lenses, much more comparable to any other VR headset that we're using connected over USB-C, you know, like the Quest 2, for example, rather than the piece of poo it looked like before, rendering at a really, really low resolution. Um, as I say, this is, the only, this is the only way I can see to do it right now. Pico are probably going to update the streaming assistant to give us more options at some point in time. So this video is only you know, relevant at the time of recording because when they release a, a newer version, hopefully there'll be more options in there and higher render resolution. So you won't have to come into SteamVR and do this. It would be nicer if you didn't have to do one less step during the configuration. Um, but obviously we'll see what Pico do going forward. It'd be nice to have a bitrate slider as well, like there is in virtual desktop, you know, to be able to choose our compression bitrate, you know, to tweak it for our individual setups, depending on what graphics card we have and what CPU we have and, you know, and, and what have you. But that gives us the sort of quality we should get over a, you know, hardwired, not hardwired, sorry, a USB connection. Now, for those of you that want to do it that way, it reduces the latency by about four or five milliseconds versus going over a good Wi-Fi connection. And of course, it will help slow down the rate of discharge of the battery if you've got it plugged in as well. So there are reasons to do it. You know, if it's going to be a long play session in your sim rig or something, um, and you don't want that battery going down too quickly, or you want that extra sort of two to five milliseconds of latency that's added by going wireless, um, you might wanna go over a nice USB-C cable. I'm actually using the official uh, Oculus Link cable because it's a nice high quality cable, so why not? But um, the, only, the only other issue I had with the Pico Streaming Assistant and that I still have is that for me, the audio still compressed and distorted. Now, I haven't heard other reviewers mention that, so I don't know if it's a, an issue with my computer or an issue with my Pico headset, but for me, the audio is basically unusable. It, it sounds like it's about eight kilobits a second of, uh, of compression, and it's all distorted and, and rough. So, And I don't get that using virtual desktop, but with the streaming assistant, whether I go wired or wireless, I do. But as I say, I've not heard anyone else mention that, so I think maybe it's a problem specific to my computer you know let me know in the comments if you experience audio distortion 
um, like I do. But there we go. That's how you can bump up the render resolution to get the Pico looking like it should look when you've got it over a wired connection. Um, and that's you know how you would do it, circumventing Pico's smooth SD and HD options, which really do need to be sorted out. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.